I'm sorry, oh. Whatever did I be yesterday, baby, I'm sorry, oh. Whatever did I be yesterday, baby, I'm sorry, oh. oh. Whatever did I be yesterday, baby, I'm sorry, oh. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> Welcome. It's Breakfast Daily on City TV. Yes, it Today's is. Today's Thursday. Yeah. One more day to go. And we are <laughs> in the weekend. That is the 29th of October. Yes. Already. By next huh. week, we'll already be in November. November. How has the year been for you? Today? Well, it's been a turbulent one. I mean, with all that has gone on, it hasn't. It wasn't expected. And so, it threw every plan out of gear. But then, yeah. 
Once we have life, we still give thanks. And hopefully there'll be a, all yeah. of us. That's an interactive show, so wherever you watch us from, we want to hear from you. Just use the hashtag Breakfast Daily to join the conversation. Well, you can also send us a message via WhatsApp using the number 0550585832. If you're watching us from outside of Ghana, uh, prefix it with a country code plus 233. Mm -hmm. My name is Nanati Fowate. And I am Jiva Now, every morning we start our day off with some words of inspiration. So we'll take a look at our quotes today. The secret of business is to know something that nobody else knows. The secret of business is to know something that nobody else knows. And this is from Aristotle Onassis. Wow, the secret of business is to know something that nobody else knows. Well, it makes sense. There's a, uh, there, there always has to be a secret of your business that nobody else knows. Other than that, what is unique about your product or your service? Mm -hmm. What is that uh, wow factor that you have? Yeah. I mean, if it's a general business or a general service and you don't have any wow factor that you throw in, I mean, then it's just a common product and you would have to really struggle in the competition. But then if you have a secret, something, especially in the food and beverages sector, yeah. there's that particular ingredient that nobody else should know. How long has, I mean, Coca-Cola been working? Oh, gosh. How I long has Pepsi been? But you know, yeah. there's, obviously, there's that. I mean, go to the food sector. I mean, every restaurant has that unique taste of, yeah. of I mean, there's something special. Mm -hmm. uh, it could be a unique ingredient, could be a special recipe yeah. that you don't know about. So always, be sure to have a secret about your business that nobody knows. You might be at the top, I mean, run the corporate governance structure and all that, but you being the head of the business should know what your target is yeah. and should devise a special strategy to reach there. Mm -hmm. you, I mean, you might be able to share it one or two people, yeah. but these people should be trustworthy enough to hold it a secret until you get there, maximize the business, and mm -hmm. continue plowing in the profits. I can't have said, <laughs> said any person. I think for young entrepreneurs, the best way to know someone that no one else knows is to actually read. Because exactly. there are so many people who exactly. have come before us. We are not doing anything new. Someone has done it before, but mm -hmm. because we've not gone out there to find out yeah. what path they took, mistakes they made, we end up repeating the same cycle. Yeah. So get a book, read it, and mm -hmm. that might be the one thing that will differentiate you from your competitors. Now, yesterday, <laughs> Finance Minister presented the first quarter of 2021 budget, budget to us. Yeah. Uh, were there any special takeaways for oh, you? Not necessarily. You know, this is just uh, one of the mandatory mm -hmm. practices during election year. So I now nothing special about it. Just the fact that he requested for some, uh, is it 27.4 billion CDs? Um, well, we're looking at for this. three months? Exactly, Ooh. for three months in 2021. Just aid a transition yeah. period, should there be a change of government or otherwise. Mm -hmm. But aside that, nothing really special. Okay. Except for a few things he threw in with respect to the COVID yeah. and all that. So let's yeah. go to Parliament and see what happened yesterday. The Finance Minister Ken Ofori Atta has asked Parliament to approve by resolution the withdrawal of the sum of $27,434,180,520 Ghana CDs from the Consolidated Fund. According to him, the amount requested for is for the purpose of meeting expenditure needed to carry on the services of the government in respect of the period expiring three months from the beginning of the financial year or on the coming into operation of the Appropriation Act in respect of the 2021 financial year. The amounts will cover compensation of employees, use of goods and services, interest payments, subsidies, grants to other government units, social benefits, other expenditure, capital expenditure, arrears clearance and amortization. Mr. Speaker, we will require an amount of 27.4 billion to carry on the services of government and to the expiration of three months from the beginning of the 2021 financial year, the total amount is to cover government operations such as compensation of employees, as gratia awards, interest and amortization, transfer to statutory funds, critical programs and goods and services, and CAPEX allocation. 
Okay, so that was the finance minister there in parliament uh, asking for some 27.4 billion yeah. currencies for the first three months of 2021. Mm -hmm. Now, earlier you asked about what really stood out. I think it's yeah. the source of funding for this budget. Yeah. And then government says that it will continue to go to the international markets to raise uh, funds. funds. And yeah. so the finance minister is asking parliament uh, to make way for him to issue some sovereign bonds of up to about 3 billion CDs uh, with the Don't. option of raising it to 5 billion CDs. So okay. I think uh, we can hear from the finance minister as well. Mr. Speaker, to support the 2021 budget and liability management, we plan to source funding from the international capital markets. This will comprom comprise the issuance of sovereign bonds of US $3 billion, with the option to increase it to $5 billion should market conditions prove favorable. Out of the amount to be raised, $1.5 billion will be used to support the 2021 budget and $3.5 billion for that was the finance minister asking for a three billion dollar bond that's a lot of money mm -hmm. yeah i mean we, 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 we're going for 27.4 billion, billion and then we are also going for yeah. three billion dollars and for me as i was listening to him i'm like okay how are we going to generate enough revenue yeah. to service all of this you know because mm -hmm. that's always a concern that some of the economists raise yeah. that as a nation we are not generating enough, enough revenue. revenue. We're still relying heavily and not manufacturing enough. How do we ensure that we get mm -hmm. the nation to a point where we're not only thinking of development from the angle of, you know, asking for money, raising bonds, but mm -hmm. actually saying this is the amount of money we think that we can generate yeah. locally to, to actually help mm. our, our, our GDP. But this particular government, if you recall, has made some interventions with respect to taxes yeah. and uh, what they've really done is to scrap off a number of taxes so really they are stifled in a way but one thing you would also notice is that they've also resorted to the international market international capital market and so you 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 know that uh, they've done some strides made some strides in there with respect to raising bonds there was a 2.2 billion dollar bond that was oversubscribed mm -hmm. after a period and now we are asking to raise some three billion with the option of increasing it to five billion dollars if the market conditions are favorable yeah. so yeah obviously the, the, there's a strategy to raise funds to fund this particular budget yeah so I'm, I'm thinking that they are looking to open up the local economy not burden local producers or local businesses mm -hmm. with taxes, yeah. but rather resort to the international capital market yeah. to fund the expenditure of government. Hmm. Well, economists are speaking, yeah. so let's hear from uh, Dr. Bedusa Kodia and then we'll continue the conversation. Yeah. Basically speaking, out of the 27, about four is going for uh, amortization. That's payment of the principal of our debt. About seven billion is going for compensation. About another seven billion into payment of interest. And then the remaining for transfer to government units. You know the transfer to government units. The district assembly common fund. We have the road fund, the get fund, etc., etc. And then we also know of the goods and services. I mean, all these things are just to help run government machinery for the first three months so that the transition period will not be disrupted. And I think the minister was very careful in mentioning the capital expenditure and that the government is just going to devote 1.9 billion cities. So not much attention was paid to the capital expenditure and rightly so because we are just talking about transitional period. And so I'm sure the remaining three quarters will place much emphasis on capital expenditure. So this should be adequate. Once we are not touching so much on the capital expenditure, but we are concentrating on the recurrent expenditure in order to run government machinery, it should be enough for government to run for the first. So that's Dr. Edu Sarkodia on that. There's another fiscal policy analyst who's saying that we need to generate more revenue locally mm -hmm. if we're spending this much. Apia Adomako is the country director for Cuts International. Let's hear from him. Looking through the government uh, projection, we still see that our total expenditure is way, way in excess of the total revenue. And we need to do more uh, in terms of the domestic revenue mobilization. When you look at our GDP to tax ratio or tax to GDP ratio, 
it is around 13 percent i mean country like ghana should be looking at 25 or 30 percent and if we were to be doing 30 percent of uh, government if government was able to task 30 percent of this economy in form of ta tax revenue i think that we might not even need to go outside to borrow any money because we've been very scared government has has been very reluctant in taxing where it needs to tax and government is always concerned about those areas the low hanging areas where it is easy for example payroll taxes as well as uh, custom duties at the port but i think for 2021 and beyond i think we need to move from this paradigm and ensure that governments can tax every right so that's another analysts there on uh, the importance of raising revenue locally and meeting certain targets but yeah the budget presentation was done in parliament obviously you have the minority and the mi mi majority go at each other over the figures in there and so i think we can take a look at this clip and then we can assess their their comments for ourselves the imf is projecting 0 0.9 this minister has always projected high figures and missed it so you cannot even trust him. Moreover, we are not at the end of the year. Why can't he even provide us with figures after September? He hasn't been able to do that. And yet he's given us so-called projections. The minister had the clear opportunity to today, today to give us at least up to September figures. He has failed to do that. All he's given us are 2019 figures. And then you jump on 2019 figures and you are drawing conclusions for end of 2020. This is nothing but a political statement. It's just trying to hoodwink Ghanaians. The reality is that this country is broke. The reality is that this country is in an economic quagmire. And if we maintain this current government, it will be much more difficult for the people of Ghana. That is a fact, and that is a fact. Well, to start with, my response is that we're just some 40 days from the election, and therefore a lot of people are thinking about election and how you can let government uh, not look too good in the eyes of the electorate so that you benefit electorally. I think they should be entitled to it. It is part of our democratic culture. But if you would go beyond the politics, and for one, uh, avert your mind to the fact that this is actually expenditures that we would incur whilst we prepare the substantive budget for 2017 in March uh, 20, oh, a substantive budget for 2021 which we will um, prepare uh, through the budget in March 2021 then this really does not call for the kind of responses you're getting it's the basic the basic things we would have to do. Don't forget, between January and, and March, uh, the new Nanado administration will be appointing people, they will be going through vetting, they will be. So, the whole point of this expenditure in advance of appropriation is to provide you with the legal authority to spend some money whilst you do that. I think our colleagues should wait. When we put the 2021 budget, that would capture the things we really want to do in the medium term on the economy. Then they will be at liberty to offer some alternatives. We are so that's some parliamentarians giving their yeah. feedback on the first quarter of 2021 budget. Well, now we all have access to it, so we can look at it and make mm -hmm. our decisions for ourselves. But it's now time to take yeah. a look at news making rounds across <laughs> the country. <laughs> Let's take a look at news roundup. Welcome to the Central Regional News Roundup. My name is Calvis Tete. The new patriotic party in the Jumakon Enyan ACM constituency has condemned a recent viral video of some alleged sympathizers of the National Democratic Congress invoking curses on the party in the constituency. The MPP believes the motive for invoking the curses is because the NDC fears defeat following the massive support shown to their parliamentary candidate by Asin Central MP Kennedy Ejapong. Rashid Etwafo is the candidate, and the MPP in the constituency says with such level of support, he is bound to win the December polls. Speaking to City News, Constituency Secretary for the MPP, Kweku Noah, 
indicated that they are united for victory 2020 and will unseat incumbent MP Kessel Atoforsen. But in a response to the allegations, the NDC denied ever knowing the individuals captured in the viral video. Still in the Jumakun Inyang ACM constituency, the NDC is accusing the MPP of being behind what they say is a series of violent attacks on its members in the constituency. Citing a recent attack on the constituency communications officer, the NDC called on the security apparatus to deal with the matter or be forced to defend themselves. Speaking to City News, constituency communications officer for the NDC, Galahad Ando, says the apparent intimidation of their members will not force them to abandon their resolve to retain the seat in the constituency. But the new patriotic party in a response has denied ever attacking the NDC and dared them to provide evidence to that effect. We go to the Commander Edina Eguafo Abrim constituency where the Ghana Union Movement has outdoored its parliamentary candidates who will be contesting in 15 out of 23 constituencies in the central region. Speaking at the Regional Leadership Conference, Central Regional Chairman of the party, Oketechi Nana Akon, noted that they will work hard to win at least a seat in the central region. The 15 outdoor parliamentary candidates were optimistic of winning in their respective constituencies. Ending with the Wutu Senya West constituency, over 100 NDC sympathizers, including former constituency chairman Simon Dodu, have defected to the ruling new patriotic party. At a colorful ceremony to welcome the defectors, incumbent MP for the area, Nay George Anda, indicated that the good works of the MPP in the constituency is what has pushed this NDC faithfuls to defect. The defectors have indicated their preparedness to work to break the jinx of making the seat a swing seat. And this is where we draw the curtain for today's edition of the News Roundup. From the Central Region, my name is Carlos Tete. Good morning and welcome to today's News Roundup from the Western North Region. My name is Stanley Bwedi. The Deputy Western North Regional Minister and MP for Sefi Akontomra constituency, Alex John Obua Tete, on Saturday, 24th October 2020, organized Best Teacher Awards at Sefi Inzaura to present packages to deserving teachers in each of the nine circuits in the district. 25 teachers and two non teaching staffs were presented with a brand new NASCO refrigerator for their dedication and hard work. The award, which is the second edition, also had the MP awarding five health workers and some drivers selected by the leadership of the Akontomra GPRTU. Honorable Alex Tete further donated some healthcare equipment to the Akontomra Health Dietary and also presented 1,000 plastic chairs to the chiefs of Enzaura and Akontomra to be used for social gatherings. In an interview with City News, Alex John Obuatete says the gesture is not a vote buying venture ahead of the December polls. Some excited awardees tells City News they are motivated by the recognition to work harder in their various fields. The Western North Regional Director of Education Stephen Kwekuusu was full of gratitude to the MP for the recognition. In other news, assembly members of the Bia East District failed to confirm the President Kufuado's nominee for District Chief Executive, Evans Amwa. He failed to get the two-thirds vote from the 16 eligible assemblymen who voted. Meanwhile, some youths of Adabokrum who were unhappy about the development are threatening to disrupt the assembly's activities if it fails to confirm Mr. Amwa. The leader of the group, Asante Yuji, tells City News, Mr. Amwa is the choice of majority of the indigenous, hence their insistence. Finally, the Western North Regional Minister, Kingsley Abwajijedu, has commissioned 
a six unit classroom block at Iwabra and Kwanta in the Awin municipality of the Western North region. Speaking at the ceremony, the minister, who doubles as the MP for Bibiani and Rianso Bekwai constituency, urged parents to take advantage of the opportunity to ensure that the awards receive quality education. In an interview with the municipal chief executive of Awin, Samuel Edujemfi revealed that the entire project amounted to 505,647.47 pesos. Some excited students who spoke to City News say they are grateful for the opportunity to study in modern structures. And that ends today's news roundup from the Western North region. My name is Stanley Bwedi. Keep watching City TV. Welcome to News Round Up here in the Upper West region. My name is Latif Mahama. A splinter group of a pro MPP Zongo youth group in the Wa municipality of the Upper West region, calling itself Z Town, has denounced claims that some of their members have defected to the main opposition National Democratic Congress. Some youth claiming to be members of Z Town last week announced their decision to join the NDC at a press conference citing neglect by the MPP as the reason for their action. But at a press conference held at the Wazongo community, the group said their membership is still intact and alleged that the youth who held last week's press conference were known NDC members. The Splinter Group explained that they are satisfied with the numerous development projects initiated by the MPP-led administration and therefore will remain committed to ensuring that the party wins the December general elections. Still in the news, members of the Nations Builders Corps, NAPCO in the Upper West region, last Sunday embarked on a series of activities to commemorate the second anniversary of the organization. The close to 200 members who were drawn from the 11 municipal and district assemblies in the Upper West region started with a help walk through the principal streets of Wa, the regional capital. They later converged at the Wa Central Market for a clean-up exercise before moving to the Wa Municipal Hospital, where they donated toiletries and COVID-19 protective equipment to the facility. The Upper West Regional Coordinator of NAPCO, Mr. Umar, speaking after the donation charged the members to be dedicated to their duties. He used the occasion to appeal to members to vote massively for the MPP to continue with the program. In other news, some residents of Bache in the Wa West District have threatened to boycott this year's elections if immediate steps are not the community with a health facility. Some of the residents who spoke to City News complained that the lack of health facility in the area is gravely impacting on their lives as patients and pregnant women are compelled to travel long distances to access health care services in other communities. They accused successive governments of paying lip service to the situation, hence they are resolved not to take part in this year's election. Finally, visually impaired students of the Wild Methodist School for the Blind have expressed worry over the lack of basic teaching and learning materials at the school. According to the students, majority of their textbooks are outmoded, while the few that have been supplied recently to the school are not on braille. Speaking to City News, the students who say the situation is impacting negatively on their academic work called on authorities to address the challenge. They bemoaned the lack of a library facility in the school and appealed to government to address the situation. And that brings us to the end of news round up here in the Upper West region. My name is Latif Mahama. Thanks for listening. Well, so that was the regional news roundup uh, where we get to bring you some news updates making rounds in the various regions across the country. Mm -hmm. Now, yes, yes I'm not going to give it away. Later, <laughs> we have news review now. Plant Mama. 
ask Duke to do his new tutorial. I'm going to run and do this stuff. Uh -huh. We're going to learn how to garden. Wow. Are you are you like a plant dada as well? Or well not not yet? necessarily, but I do love my plants when I come across them. Oh, yeah. so maybe maybe you will give you one of these babies and then yeah. you will nurture them. Yeah, I'll nurture them into big plants later. So we're going to be gardening today, guys. Grab some soil, grab some plants. Mm -hmm. It's going to be fun. So right as Duke is doing his news review, I'm going to run off. And then we're going to have some fun. All right. <laughs> we'll see you after this break. <laughs> my name is Jifa Ikea Avatar. And mine is Nana Tufo. Duke Meso Poku comes up next with mm -hmm. a news review we'll segment. We'll be right back. building the foundations for growth and transformation. We are curbing unemployment with new and decent jobs. Thanks to Nana, I've got a new job through NAPCO. That is why I'm waiting for him as the MPP. The promise of free SHS is now a reality. Through education, I have a brighter future. That's why I'm voting for Nana and the MPP. The future of our country is in the hands of a competent, a man you can trust. I trust Nana. This December, let's protect our progress. Let's give Nana four more to do more for you. 2020, 2020, four more for Nana. 2020, 2020, Nana. Hello, good morning and welcome to the Thursday edition of the News Review segment on Breakfast Daily on City TV. Just 39 days to election 2020. The show is live and interactive. You can join us uh, via the WhatsApp number 0550585832, as well as join us on the other platforms on Twitter and on Facebook, the stream uh, that will be beaming this live. My name is Duke Mento Poku. Let's begin by looking at the stories on the front pages of the major newspapers in the country, beginning with the Daily Graphic. Government to spend 27.5 billion Ghana cities covers up to March 2021. MDA's debt owed VRA cleared, as according to the CEO of VRA, Imano Chum, Enchi Dakwa. To the Ghanaian Times. Government requests 27.4 billion Ghana cities to carry out programs activities from January to March next year. Another story on the front page of the Ghanaian Times. President condemns NPP and DC violent clashes at Odododo. We resort to smart, responsible borrowing to address unsustainable debt regime. That's the NDC. To the new crusading guide. Finance Minister Crax Mahama says, HIPIC is behind us, no turning back. To the Daily Heritage. School owners, parents applaud NDC for plans to include private schools in free senior high school, free SHS. Pram Pram Beach to go high tech to attract tourists in Nenebantima the fourth assures. Social media attacks on churches demoralizing as Bishop Takia Boy. So our last newspaper, the business finder. Government targets 5.7% growth, pledges to revitalize, transform economy. Comes to the picture of Mr. Kenoforiata, Minister for Finance. Supporters after that's the Africa Free Continent, Africa Continental Free Trade Area. A call coming from the Association of Ghana Industries (AGI). Boost for planting for food and jobs initiative. That's on page nine of the Business Finder. To the online stories now, beginning with citynewsroom.com. Ghana's ballooning debt stock amid COVID-19 justifiable. 
that's according to the Deputy Finance Minister, or Deputy Finance Minister in BFOP, Obwase West, Kweku Kwating. Charges on power deals reduced by 30% after renegotiations. John Pitamewo, Minister for Energy. Don't drag my office into partisan politics. Martin Amidu to Mahama, the candidate of the NDC. I have no hand in secessionist groups' activities. John Peter Amewu, from that interview which aired on Point of View last night with Bernard Avle. Please invite Said Sinai over claims he distributed weapons to cause chaos. That's a story we'll be discussing this morning later on. To citybusinessnews.com. Finance Ministry got 50 bills passed by Parliament within four years. Finance Minister Ken Oforiata. Government seeks approval to issue 5 billion sovereign bond. That's also one of the major high points from yesterday's presentation to Parliament on the appropriation expenditure in advance of appropriation. HIPIC is behind us. There's no turning back. Oforiata. Finance Minister requests 27.4 billion for 2021 first quarter expenditure. Stambik board appoints Kwame Nasumenin as chief executive as Alhassan and Dani retires. For more news, log on to citynewsroom.com. For more business stories, log on to citybusinessnews.com. I have been joined in studio by uh, Director of Legal Affairs of the NDC, Ibrahim Amaliba. Welcome, sir. Thank you for having me. And also been joined by Richard Asante Abouas, government spokesperson on infrastructure. Welcome, Richard. Thank you very much. So we'll begin uh, with the fallout from the budget reading, the expenditure in advance of appropriation, or a budget for the first quarter of 2021, which has now become mandatory due to the dictates of the Public Financial Management Act. So the Finance Minister was in Parliament to present a budget essentially for the first quarter of 2021 um, to get approval from the House to spend some 27.5.4 billion Ghana cities. We'll take the story from Daily Graphic. Now, the story says, government has projected to spend 27.4 Ghana, Ghana, billion Ghana cities in the first three months of next year. The amount is to be used to run the country between January and March 2021, pending the presentation of a full budget that later that quarter. It will finance key expenditure items such as debt service, compensation of public sector employees and activities of key government agencies prior to drawing up of a full budget for the year 2021. Out of the amount projected for the period, 3.77 billion will be spent on area clearance and debt amortization, while the remainder will be spent on employee compensation and other critical expenditure items. Now, the finance minister, Ken Ofriata, disclosed this in parliament yesterday when he requested the House to approve expenditure in advance of appropriation for next year. The presentation is a provision for the smooth running of government business for the first three months after an election cycle. Now, sources of financing. Now, to finance the projected expenditure, Mr. Ofriata requested Parliament to approve the issuance of sovereign bonds of three billion with the option to increase it to five billion should market conditions prove favorable. Now, to, and in terms of utilizing the money, uh, he gave an insight into how the projected amount would be expended and said the entire 27.4 billion would cover government operations such as worker compensation, ex gratia awards, interest and amortization payments, transfers to statutory allocations to ministries, departments, and agencies. Let me begin with you, uh, Richard, on this issue, on, this, on the presentation of the budget or the advanced budget by the finance minister yesterday. 27.4 billion. Some people think it's, it's, it's quite on the high side. Thank it's you very much. Bit. And then good morning to your good sub Duke and also my good friend uh, Amaniba. I would want to say that it's in line with our uh, constitution, also the uh, Financial Management Act, that uh, these things are done. Particularly when you look at what happens in election years. You literally need to prepare and take it to the uh, guest house for approval before you can spend even a penny belonging to the good people of this country. So the finance minister did the needful by going to parliament to ask for the next government to spend uh, 27 billion to deal with the major critical issues. And as it was indicated, when you talk about workers' compensation, we are looking at salaries and all that. We are looking at 
uh, SGA shares that will be paid to those exiting the, the, the executives. And, and also we are looking at uh, other payment, statutory payment that need to be going to the various agencies and other institutions. And also dealing with very, very fundamental issues that borders on the economy. However, you realize that it has been a trend. And for us, the New Patriotic Party, we've managed the economy pretty well because we know that, by the grace of God, Nana being number one, that victory has been guaranteed already. So we are going to continue with the governance of this country. So we've not done anything to mess up the fortunes and also the future of this country. But it was very uh, revealing that the finance minister equally took the opportunity to give certain basic details for Ghanaians to understand and appreciate particularly in the area where false news and also uh, spin doctors and misinformation peddlers have been have uh, uh, and, and f false advert uh, uh, spinnings have equally taken over our media space and putting out the falsehood trying to dent either image and also the credibility and and what has been done by this government finance minister took the opportunity to explain because you hear a lot of people talk about you borrow a lot of money what have you used those monies for i mean use the opportunity to, to give details as to what those monies have been given though we know that the ndc when they talk about this in particular former president Mahama, when he talks about he knows it because in 2016 he had an interview where he gave Ghanaians an, an idea of how to sort of know how much is being spent where money is borrowed are going into where he, he referred to a journalist that you know what you can go to parliament where every money that is spent or borrowed you go to parliament before you can do that and once you do that parliament you have to give the prospectus or indicate to parliament how these monies will be expended and he told Ghanaians the finance minister made us made it clear to us that when we came in remember we talked about the excess capacity in the energy sector we have to spend 12 billion to deal with that issue alone in that area we also that is and then we inherited uh, what we call it, uh, 12 billion excess capacity, so we have to pay for that. We also look at uh, making sure that at least the outstanding areas that we inherited, that included contracts that have been awarded, that monies were not found uh, uh, found for, and the government then, then government had no idea how it was going to pay for these contracts and other things that they involved themselves to. Government had to spend uh, borrow in excess of 12, uh, 11 billion to pay for that particular uh, aspect too. We are also looking at the fact that government had to cancel or remove or uh, abolish about 17 different taxes, some of them reducing it and some of them uh, abolishing it completely. So it gives you an indication that government knows what it's about. And then we are looking at about 21.6 billion was also taking for the financial sector clean up and we are looking at about uh, saving depositors of about 4.6 uh, million and also investors who uh, numbered around uh, 81,000 uh, uh, Richard, when, when people plus. talk about what in terms of um, what if there is anything to show for the boring they are talking about tangibles not I mean, about paying debt and reprofiling debt, uh, 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 which uh, every government does. I, I agree with you, you see uh, what I was talking about is just to offer a general overview and a basic uh, summary of what has happened. But you see, when we talk about tangibles, we are talking about rules. We are talking about uh, hospitals. We are talking about schools. We are talking about some of these infrastructures that we've seen across the country, the real infrastructure. We are seeing the investment that has been made in the energy sector. All those things are investment that you can see, and I think Ghanaians can see that. You are looking at what, are, what is being spent on free education and the likes. Ghanaians can see that. But beyond that, we need to, needed to let the Ghanaian understand that. I mean, even some of the money we borrowed, the people who knows, because the NDC are members in parliament, they know whatever money that comes to parliament, they understand where it's going into. And they usually concur with the government on some of these things and approval is given. So when they later come to question us where this money went into, when you know that when you were exiting power, you had contract that you've awarded projects that have been completed or some that were ongoing that you do not pay a peso that you let left, left in, in excess of 11 billion how were you expecting government to pay for that in continuum so the government came in and dealt with that when you know that in the energy sector alone the excess capacity contract that you sign where would take or pay whether you use the power you do not use it you have to pay when we do not need certain uh, badges, uh, but power badges, but you, all of them were brought in and were being charged. And
government had to be spending huge sums of money. Government needed to pay over twelve billion dollars to deal with that situation. So when you know that those things were created because of your actions and actions, when you know that indeed the financial sector before this government came in, in essence of about eighty uh, microfinance and, uh, institutions have collapsed, mm -hmm. including the likes of DKM, God is Love, and their siblings. You can talk about all of them. All these companies had collapsed, but this government came in and had to find ways of borrowing money to deal with the situation in the banking sector, making sure that the sector is clean up. Then where is in the government what those monies have been used for? Particularly when you are aware that these monies went into uh, ABCD. You are looking at a situation where if government had not done that, about 4.6 million depositors who are Ghanaians were going to lose their investment. You are looking at its impact on the economy, on the lives of people. So it was extremely difficult decision the government needed to take to find money to deal with this issue. We are looking about saving the investment of about 81,700 plus investors. All these things have been done. When you know that, when you were hesitant, you have cancelled, uh, abolished the nursing training allowance, somebody had to come and restore it, and the teacher training allowance, somebody had to restore it. All these things were money paid to people. When you know that when, because of COVID, people were enjoying free water, and we are giving uh, free electricity to about 1.2 million Ghanaians till December. When you know that about uh, the entire country got about 50% uh, subsidy in terms of electricity, before even this came in, Government has reduced electricity by 30 percent for uh, uh, non-residential consumers, 17 percent for residential consumers, 20 percent for industries, the mining sector, we got 10 percent reduction. When you are aware of all these facts, when you are aware that government has taken its a bolder decision by making sure the import duties are reduced by 50, 30 percent, sometimes 70 percent, and some even uh, raw materials and machinery, when they're imported, you don't pay duties on that. When you are aware of all these measures that have been put in place, when you are aware that when you were hesitant, students were paying school fees at the uh, junior uh, SSHS level, that they were paying their own examination fees, that the government comes in and pays school fees and that people are paying a peso, enjoying free education. People are enjoying that and government is paying for the examination fees of all these children. When you are equally aware that beyond this, government has invested hugely in digitizing the economy. Where now we have digital address system that is ongoing, and practically companies and uh, residential properties are getting and benefiting, and country is moving forward. When you are aware that when you had eight years of being in power, President Kufour, a, a, a program of bringing to us national ID system during the entire eight-year period, you do not produce a single ID card. Not a single one. No, but during this government period, I mean, now we have process, close to close to close to fifty million Ghanaians, fifty million of no, place. fifty millions of Ghanaians, fifty who are now cardholders, and the number is growing every now and then. These things have to be paid for because there's a government that has foresight. When you are aware that when you are in power, we were practically importing contemporary tomato from our neighboring countries. Now a government comes in and invests hugely in agriculture, where we have planning for food and jobs, and now people are getting jobs, including former MPs of the NDC who are testifying the life transforming, uh, tra transforming decision that has been made by this government that has imp impacted hugely on its life. Okay. When you so are aware that when you were exiting power, so that, yeah. the National Health Insurance Authority was facing a major challenge that pro service provider had to wait for 12 months, sometimes 13 months, 14 months before they are paid. Now this government has revived the National Health Insurance. Their payments are on, 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 on record time and uh, uh, this insurance policy is ongoing where people are not even getting onto the insurance through the mobile money system. When you are aware that before you hesitate, mobile money to publicity that you could have done to help shape the economy and help move the economy in a digital way, you thought of signing a contract that was going to cost, and you even started the process, that was going to cost the country $1.2 billion, my brother, read my lips, $1.2 billion, you were going to spend that money. This government comes in and saw that this scheme looks very fictitious and, and it's something that didn't sit well with the government and the president. That this arrangement were cancelled. It was going to be done by RAG uh, through the certain switch. switch. Now, this government gives, comes gives, in, gives this government comes in okay. and, and, uh, right. and, and do the same program with even a wider scope. 
where does could mobile money into probability where the banking system is linked to that and it cost the country four million so 4.6 million dollars it tells you that in this there's a difference between light and darkness and there's okay. the mpp is the light there's a difference between competence indecisiveness and, 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 and compassion leader let me and decisive let me leader in the director of legal affairs of the ndc council uh, this issue of um, the presentation of, of of the budget was done yesterday uh, richard believes that or richard is of, the, is of the view that what was presented yesterday speaks to the competent management of the economy by the by, by the MPP. What do you, what's, your, what's your response? First of all, your general impressions of the presentation of the budget yesterday and the comments made by Richard with regards to the superior management strategy economically of the Akofuado administration. Duke, let me start by saying good morning to your viewers. The presentation yesterday did not indicates Ghanaian situation. The finance minister failed to give us an understanding of the, the real economic situation that Ghana faces. He failed to do that. And so I think it was just to come and tout the credentials of the president and ask that people should vote for him. But let me touch on some of the misinformation that Richard just spewed out. The free senior high school program is not dependent on the loans that we received. Do you know that we are using our oil resources to fund that? So when people so ask, part of expenditure. No, no, wait, wait, wait. I'm saying that. But, but that's not even the case. Oh, when you were talking, you, uh, please, I kept I mean, quiet. No, no. It isn't that. It isn't that. Because it's it isn't that. But that's okay. That's fine. It that's fine that. with me. I was that's happy when you. you were talking. I that's was, okay. That's okay. I was that's in okay. pain. So also be in pain and listen. I was just going to make some preparations, but don't worry. I am saying that we have always asked the question. You've borrowed more than any government. From the days of Diabo Di Azembuja, through to God in God is back, through to Nkrumah to today, you've borrowed more than any government. What have you used the money for? Then their answer is, is going to the free senior high school. I am saying that that is not the money that is used for free senior high school. Contradict me. Look, look. Can I? There is, it is, no, it is fun, the oil that fund borrowed. It is, there is, oh, a, there it is, is oil that no, 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 sustainability. No, 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 you don't understand. Richard, when we ask the, the fund money for when we ask the question, five billion. When we ask the question, what did you use the money for? Then you answer is your answer is we use of free senior school. It's not the money. Free to senior school was one of the one of the numerous things. He, he infrastructure mentioned. for free SHS. One oh. of the numerous things that he mentioned. There, yes, one of the numerous things. But this program, like any other program, is to educate the people. Okay. We're not here to steal lies for but people. But I told you, get fund has I am to saying, look, talk, talk about 1.5 billion talk about for infrastructure for free Talk, yes, talk about get fund. Uh, please allow I am saying that free senior high school point. is funded by yes. our oil minutes resources. To make a point uninterrupted. Thank you. It's oil resources. Stop that lie. It's not part of the 270 billion you have uh, 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 of our desktop. Two, planning for food and jobs. You are touting it. When we were on, in lockdown in Accra and Kumasi alone. You couldn't feed people for three weeks. You couldn't feed people for three weeks. And you are counting, planning for food and jobs. Three weeks, you couldn't feed people. How is your plan for food and jobs to be seen as a success story? When you were in lockdown to feed Ghanaians for three weeks, you couldn't. You saw how shambolic the foods were even distributed. <laughs> Look, but you see, if you want to know the health of the economy, look at the health of the economy when NDC left power and the health of the economy today. Debt to GDP ratio, they took over what, 57%. Debt to GDP no, ratio. It was, over, it was over 60%. I'm saying that when they took over, Debt to GDP ratio was 57% under NDC. It was over 60%. Get, I don't know where you get your figures. But today, yes. today, it is 68.3%. And we have been told by the World Bank that it will hit 76.7%. Did we go or did we come? As a nation, if you took 
your debt to GDP ratio from 56%, granted, 60%, even granted. Today, what are we looking at? We are looking at 68.3%, and in December, we'll be looking at it from 76.3%. Is that a good record? I just talked about taking the debt stock from 120 billion cities to 270 billion. Is that a good record? Is that a good record? I hear the president go around saying that Mama hasn't left him anything. Who tells the president that you come into government and all problems are solved? If that were the case, why do we elect presidents? If that were the case, that you, you are voted into office and then you come and then there's everything in place, then you say, hooray, I'm ruling the country. If that's your case, why would we be queuing to vote presidents? You have to come and deal with the challenges of the times. In any case, that was a lie. We left when we were leaving government. Ghana Infrastructure Fund, we left 270 billion cities in it. Sinking Fund, we left 300 billion cities in, in it to am amortize the 750 b b uh, 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 million euros that before took. So we had to put in place a second fund to deal with that. We left 250 billion. Let's look at the numbers well. I'm saying that we left 270 million dollars in, this, in the, oh, the GET fund. Thank God for the, the correction. In the, in the Ghana yes, infrastructure I just fund. wanted to correct you on that. It wasn't big. So if you have a president who, in his first year, has become the most unpopular president, by just what, in his by first year. By what metric? <laughs> by the metric. By what metric I'm, I'm going to give you a metric. You, you I'm going to give you a metric. That, yes. One of the metrics, just one. Of the metric is what the Pong chief did to him. Th that has been clarified. Was clarified I don't yesterday like that. You are not supposed to be. I have told you, we've never seen that. Where a chief. We also saw the videos. If you've gone back to talk to the chief to uh, uh, massage it, we also saw the videos. We saw how the chief was annoying with the president who comes only with a, 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 a pickaxes and shovels, traveling with them all over the constituency, digging holes and creating. Were potholes for people to be fall in them and saying that he's a cutting sword. The chief told him point blank, Mr. President, what's the difference between sword cutting and the other one? He said what? Um, the other one is what? Uh, uh, because according to the chief, you have already come there to do a similar thing. So what are you coming but to do again? That's not true. This is a agenda 111 project. So the you, you, you see it's that the people, program. the people themselves are fed up with the president. This president is the only president who, during campaigns, lead up to the elections, instead of commissioning projects, is spending half of his time during his campaign cutting swords. In, in, to, 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 to hoodwink the people into thinking that he's bringing in a project to help them. So, look, all the shows and we are now, a, 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 the, the, I'm told we are now a high distress debt country. Because That's not the levels at which we are borrowing has made Ghana to be really under a lot of debt. And yet these were the people who told us that they weren't going to borrow and that all the money is here. You should say I'm lying that one too. But I, I, the, I think the argument was about... The, uh, the, 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 the level of borrowing, uh, uh, was reckless borrowing. Or, I am saying that was, was that borrowing. statement made or not? This is my statement. No, no, I'm making no, from no, my no, mouth. Nobody said that, that you will not borrow. The, but we didn't say that. I'm all the money is here. I'm borrowing. Ah, so why did you make that statement? But nobody said that. Look at. But, but, never Richard, said Richard, that. How can you? He said I should. Richard, how can you Richard, answer? Richard, how can you sit here, look in the eye, uh, people in the eye, and lie that nobody said that? But we didn't say that. No. Bring the tape. So, I am saying that clearly, this government is unpopular. This government has failed. This government, with all the borrowing, it has not led to any transformation. All those monies have been consumed by corruption. All those monies have been consumed by corruption.
How do you have, have you, you, have you noticed you, that? You have that you noticed that? Can just make have you noticed that? A claim with have you noticed that? With any, have you noticed that? Evidence, backing it with have you noticed evidence. that? In this election electioneering campaign, okay. the MPP. Well, well you, the, you, you, you get to wrap up on the point when we are back, we are when we are back from the break. It, we have we have to take a break now. Yes, we'll be back after this break. Keep your messages coming. And this is Breakfast Daily on City TV. <laughs> It can be very dangerous on these streets for a pedestrian. So here's how the National Road Safety Authority wants you to stay safe out there. If you're going to cross the road, make sure it's a zebra crossing on a footbridge or at a traffic signal. If you're crossing anywhere else, please look left, right and left again to ensure there are no vehicles approaching. And please pay attention Put crossing the road. One moment of distraction could end your life. Let's look out for ourselves, protect each other, and arrive alive. Thank you. Alive. Everyone needs you alive. Arrive Welcome back. This is Breakfast Daily on City TV. I still have in studio a director of legal affairs for the NDC, uh, Abraham Amalba, and uh, government spokesperson on infrastructure, Richard Asante Abwa. Here are some comments that you've brought, sent in so far. Walanyo Nakwetia says the debt has the debt that the NDC contracted. How much went into? How much did they pay before leaving office? Do they remember the energy sector debt, the debt at NHIS, etc.? I don't think NDC remember. I don't think NDC remembers that they governed Ghana some years back. Regards to Ernest Yaokumi. Yao Sankide in Taifa says, fellow Ghanaians, let us compare Mohammed's led government, which sent Ghana to IMF's harsh conditionalities without giving freebies to Ghanaians. But under the able leadership of President Akufuado, he built up Ghana from the IMF and set Ghana beyond aid. He's given freebies to Ghanaians creating jobs and massive infrastructure development. Uh, but still, Ghana is above EPIC. Tom La from Mankara so says, I have no doubt that the people of Ghana will elect JM, the visionary and peace-loving king of infrastructure and development to return and implement his wonderful programs like the 10 billion big push for infrastructure, 1 million jobs, free primary health care, 50% reduction of tertiary fees, allowance for assembly members, pension and free fertilizers for farmers. Uh, and many more. So before we went to the break, you were wrapping up on the point about the budget and it not pretending any good or in terms of any justification for and, the and present current government management of the economy. Yes, and in the energy sector, somebody just talked about energy. In the energy sector, we ensured, we ended DUMSO and we also instituted the ESLA fund. You, you are aware of that. Which fund they are utilizing today. They said they were, when they come, they were going to scrap it. But in wrapping up, what I sought to say is that you've noticed that absent in their campaigning this time is the issue of corruption. Conspicuously absent, because they know that they have come into power and they have so much resources available to the extent that you find that the corruption under this administration has seen no equal measure. See how they remove the, uh, the auditor general, and see what has happened. Is removed? That's a matter in court. I'm saying yes, that see what has happened. Allegedly, about why? Why? Who does the man is not going to come back again? How? And the matter who doesn't know that the man is not going to come back again? Who doesn't know that he will come back? Has he retired? Has he retired? Has he retired? Has he retired? Richard, you have your opportunity. Has he retired? Joe Ajima is different. Joe Ajima got to retirement. That's not true. You are lying. He was, was documented. I am saying that I the man is not coming back again. In any case, the matter is in. The man is not coming back again. The matter has been sent to a Supreme So, you lawyers say even, those, the even those who you, you, you are fighting corruption under this administration you can't be are being fought about back it. and being removed. And so, when I said that, look, 
have been consumed by corruption, I mean that you can find in this administration corrupt access as PD, uh, PDS. You can see corrupt access as the uh, EJAPA. These are mothers of all corruption in this Japa country. Is also under, uh, under corruption risk assessment by the special. And I'm saying that even no if, if, if people well, money were already dispensed, people mm. took their money. Mm. Persons who were asked to work under those uh, uh, deals and they didn't go through PPA. Take took monies, you are aware. And so, and, and, and when you check, wh who are those who took the monies? Close relatives of their president. And so, in this administration, you can see friends and family members are the ones that are enjoying. Look at the president's sister's keeper's uh, daughter's uh, company. Can you imagine? Well. So all these things are a clear indication that the Ghanaian people have wised up and definitely the Ghanaian people will look at these things and show this administration the, the, the exit. Richard, your response Thank you very much. I, I think uh, we have to be fair to the facts. So for me, I'm going to be very fair to the facts. And I think my brother has not done justice to the facts. The issue is that MPP administration, in terms of the fair, a government first term in, in power, has done more projects than any other government in our history. And I'm going to give well, you first, well, don't worry. Richard. I'm going to give you so because based on the delivery track, we, 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 of course, of course, in terms of even the of course. viability of some of the projects. Of course, don't worry. I'm, of course, I'm going to give you details. My brother, it is exciting for Ghanaians to know that there's a government that is ready to account to the people. You mentioned delivery tracker because you can go and track it. No, that is so you can tell Green that, book. I mean, Green Book, really. That was made up of a, 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 a thing that never existed anywhere in the country. My brother, and you are we have them. a government, we so have a government, exist, we, have, we have a government, we have a government that for the first three and a half years, getting to four years, has co signed contract to complete 18,891. Signing contract is an achievement. Hey. Those that have been completed, Signing contracts. Those, those contracts are awarded for when, when, when he was disrupting, we all agreed that it was not fair. So signing contracts. 18,891. Out of Bring this contract point. that had been signed, 10,153 has been completed. Mm -hmm. 8,738 uh, 8, uh, 8, are at various stages of completion. We talk about this government that borrowed money, and as we are speaking, my brother, Tamale interchange is ongoing. There's no government in our history that has been able to complete even uh, done uh, 50, uh, 500 kilometers of asphalted road in its first uh, mm -hmm. four years. This government has done 751 kilometers of asphalted roads within this short period of being in government. We can boast of major, major infrastructure projects. I'm not talking about those uh, coconut projects that you talk about. Mm -hmm. You're looking about thermal interchanges. Completed. Tamale interchange is not going to be If, it is, if, that, if it's, that money it's, it's, is added to Mohammed's debt, mm -hmm. they, they can dispose of it. It's not contentious. It the, 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 money, the contract was signed in 2018, mm -hmm. and the project started in 2018, and it's completed right, the now. The argument the NDC makes what is that the funding was secured. No, 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 there was no funding secured. The funding came in 2018. Parliament approved in 2018. The next thing, we are looking at a Pokwasi interchange. The second biggest interchange Mama ever in, uh, West Af uh, in Africa. Another Mahama project. In West Africa, the biggest inter uh, interchange. This is under MPP. PTC interchange in uh, Takrade. It is ongoing. We, complete, uh, we, we, we have awarded contract for the completion of 76 steel bridges across the country, out of which 46 of them have been completed. You are looking at about roads, cocoa roads. Over 46 major cocoa roads have been awarded for contract. Mm -hmm. And you are looking at areas in terms of roads that have been completed. Bimbila Salaga Road, Bushegu Narelugu Road. All these roads, when I mention, the people are, are there, they can see it. But it's beyond all these things that we talk about. My brother was here talking about the fact that uh, free education, government never borrowed money. It is true, government decided to, to fund, it from fund some of the money from oil. But I remember that the Petroleum Management Fund mm -hmm. has certain regulations that it talks about you need to spend some education, health, and agriculture. So all those money could not have been sent to education. Now, what you need to understand is that under GetFund, 
government had to collateralize the fund that will be coming for 1. a loan of 1.5 billion dollars that will be coming in transit we've received the first 700 million that is why as we speak over 1480 blocks including classroom blocks uh, science laboratory uh, dining halls uh, uh, dormitories and other have been completed across the country that is a visionary leader a compassionate leader that who the, cares the about the that people. comes into the, the, the of course that's that not necessarily that's, that's but not necessarily that's add to your desk talker i know that's the argument it adds up it adds up it adds up it adds up because the point is that any debt once you borrow the money it adds up to your desk talk so long as it has not been paid for the end is to understand retiring the debt is is money that no is that that is coming up recurring and you are going to pay based on the process that you are getting into i agree with you every every loan has the repayment, every, every arrangement. Every loan has a repayment arrangement. Some of them need to use bus, some of them need to use gold. And all. that's why you see the Sino Hydro project. A government thinking outside the bus, thinking that it is not right to hand over over 70 percent of our bus reserve to a, a president brother. But government takes it and say, you know what? I'm going to leverage on just five percent of that to secure money to build this country. That's why you have projects ongoing across the country. If the NDC has nothing to talk about, they should not say it. Okay. This business is about corruption. We are not talking about corruption, really. Are we not talking about the Airbus scandal that uh, the incompetent Airbus Mahama has brought shame to Ghanaians? Are we not talking about all the major things that happened during the NDC time? People have been prosecuted. Some of them are currently even languishing okay. in jail. So we are talking about corruption. Wrap, 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 in terms of when we are taking, when we come, when we are, when we are discussing the second issue, in terms of our activities, let's move to the second issue. In terms of our activities and the fight against corruption, we have set up a special prosecutor's office where he's doing his work. When we came in, for the first time, Shraj has gotten the biggest budget ever in their life, giving all these uh, uh, institutions money to find and, and do their work. When we came in, even uh, Domino Vodai was appointed after Mahama has lost an election on 29th of December. When somebody was appointed, the president, you know, I, I can't do this, I can't accept this, I'll wait for the next president to come. And who was appointed, who has become a celebrity auditor general, busily doing the bidding of the NDC. And on that, to, that's who has been, who, who, is, who is proceeding the on the, the is on proceeding, no. who is proceeding let's, on leave? Let's who has to been asked to proceed on, uh, on, on, on uh, uh, leave? Let's go on leave and come back. What is not at his retirement age. Okay. The NDC is against that. Right. The so NDC government is fighting corruption. Issue. And so right. the NDC needs to accept it. It's still related to the debt stock. The Minister of Finance, Ken of Rata, is making, says Ghana is making economic progress and there's no turning back to the days of Epic. The president said the decision. The minister said the decision of President John Kufo's administration to sign Ghana onto the HEPIC initiative was due to the poor economic situation inherited from the previous NDC government. Delivering the 2021 first quarter budget statement in Parliament on Wednesday, Mr. Foriata said the Jomahama government failed to maintain the country's economic gains and again took the country into an IMF program. Now, similar story uh, coming in from the NDC. There was a press briefing yesterday that was addressed by the communications officer of the party. Now, the story says the National Democratic Congress is insisting that Ghana has the features of a highly indebted poor country, even if it has not officially been classified as one. We, to quote the words, we wish to reiterate the assertion by our flag bearer, His Excellency John Dramani Muhammad, that President Kufuado has supervised the degeneration of Ghana's economy back to the same unsustainable debt position uh, we were when we joined the HEPIC program 19 years ago, the party said at a press conference on Wednesday, October 2018. Addressing the president, NDC's communications officer, Sami Jenfi, said the governing New Patriotic Party had made similar claims in the past to critique management of the economy. You may recall that in the run-up to the 2016 general elections, the MPP led by uh, Dr. Alhaji Baumia said, then candidate Akufo adoberated the NDC for what they described as excessive borrowing by the Bahama government. So, Finance Minister Ken Oferata talks about, and of course the IMF in a statement has also clarified, that once Ghana has completed the program, Ghana cannot be back onto the HEPIC program again. Is this not a confusion about HEPIC status or debt status and that of joining a HEPIC program meant to be exploited for political gain? You see, this, the useless Nana Akufado government Cannot it's boast less, of. I think it's, no, no, it's a no. harsh, harsh word. Okay, I want us to not address to be this. Fair. I want us to address this. He just sat here and referred to Mahama as incompetent Mahama. I didn't hear you 
question. Mm -hmm. You think that that has now gained currency, so it can pass. Well, I think. I think. I am saying that. Point. Back to him in equal measure. Mm -hmm. Useless Nana Akufado government. The useless Nana Akufado government cannot show us a single secondary school he has bought. That's problematic. I can show us their priorities. Government. Yes. I can yes, show recently, you. Recently, there was a there was a, a sign a model science is, uh, school that was that was commissioned by the president. We are not so talking about going to so if, create, if that's going the to create, that going to build dormitories. That's not what we are talking about. I'm going to build and going to build and going, uh, going to build dining halls mm -hmm. and going to uh, erect poly tanks and mm -hmm. christen them as uh, success stories. He's talking about his tracker. This tracker has been criticized by everybody because there are a lot of repetitions. This tracker was the one that said that. Uh, 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 a football turf, what what green turf has been constructed at Adenta. Isn't all this useless tracker? They so see, they see you, 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 you use your tracker to come and deceive the people, and the people saw it. You saw ordinary Ghanaians going to stand at those locations and brokers. You you city TV here have got what is called citizens' uh, 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 journalism. They did that, showed signboards. That indicated that a project was going to be built here was but interpreted were, by them as a complete were various project. Classifications, ongoing complete. Oh no! I am saying that don't hold me for them. I'm not holding for God's sake! The questions. I am saying that in I'm one. Asking questions, okay, I am. Counsel. I'm saying that in, in one. Just the agenda one. They say it was completed. No. Oh, and yeah. uh, in Bolga, mm -hmm. there was a signboard of some low cost houses. They say it's completed. Ongoing. People went there and stood by them, took pictures and showed that it's all a signboard. A lot of them. So that's what I'm saying that this useless Akufado government using his useless tracker to uh, as well con people will not work. On your substantive issue, a question which has to do with whether we have made progress or we've not made progress. Is there for everybody to see. And so I have earlier on indicated to you that if you took the nation from a certain level to some downward spiral, you cannot be boasting that you are performing. The figures is uh, that Dr. Wong who is the one who said the data speaks for itself to quote him. But when the former president said that we are back to HIPIC, he did not say that IMF has classified Ghana as HIPIC. Mm. Yes. Interpretations yes. It and, so and, I'm telling and, you, I'm and, telling you, I'm telling you. He didn't say that. On social media he didn't, yes, yes, he didn't say that the World Bank has classified Ghana as HIPIC. Indeed, the World Bank doesn't classify nations as HIPIC. It's IMF. I'm saying IMF doesn't classify any country as HIPIC. So the IMF cannot, for instance, say Sudan, you are HIPIC. No. There's a program that is there. Then if you think that your debt levels are for, 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 for HIPIC, debt distress. So are we there or not? The IMF itself has said that by December next month, we are already at 68. Uh, a little over 68. By December next month, we will be 76.7. Now, in 2016, Dr. Munya made similar comments. That didn't mean that when he made those comments, that didn't mean that we were now classified as HIPPIE. Because HIPPIE program, once you enter once, they are all So, it's so, about, good. so we the, so the political it, class exploiting exactly. these you know nuances for political exactly. advantage. That's the question I have. Exactly. So what we are saying, what the former president said is that we are back to those levels. And it's true that we are back to those levels. I heard them say COVID. Our debt situation was going out of hand before COVID hit in March. When the finance minister went to parliament, how much did we spend on uh, COVID? 10 billion. Eh? How much did you borrow? About 140 billion. They so go, they went into various programs. I'm saying that when you take that. 10 billion from 140 billion, where is the rest? 
Where is the rest? Then you hide under COVID. That uh, is because of COVID that the death situation went out of gear. I am saying that even before, we were coming onto this program before COVID hit us. And we we're asking the questions. Why is our debt going up? Did we start asking the questions when COVID hit? No. You are a program. You host programs. We about the debt situation. Now, you find a uh, information minister coming out trying to explain away that, that it's because of the COVID. Say those to the Marines. Okay, I'll bring you in here. Okay, let me on say this, to the Ghanaians, not the Marines. Same, is, uh, it a, is, it, is, it, is it is it is it not a confusion between the status of, of a dead distressed country uh, the, joining the IMF CPIC program, which we've reached the completion point? I, that, I think that it, is it's about of, of the is. NDC understanding these simple matters. Those are the challenges that we have. That's, that's, that's and also, sometimes they do understand, but you, you feel like they pretend because they think that once they go on that tangent, it, they will be able to secure some electoral advantage. But the Ghanaian are well awake and understand these basic principles. As at uh, 2001, when Ghana had to be forced by the condition we met, because when you came in, the condition that were prevailing had gone past the hippic. Uh, 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 benchmarks. The debt, debt to GDP of this country was over 126 uh, percent. So if obviously we're far above that, and the country was in a serious crisis. So we just needed to go there. And then when you become HIPIC, what uh, or sign up to the HIPIC program, what it allow for is that you get some uh, yes. reliefs yes. and also loans are being there, forgiveness and cancellation and all that. But once you go through that process, there are certain indicators that you need to meet before you can exit. And once you meet those indicators as a country, you can never go back again because obviously those basic indicators have been met. But uh, along the line, IMF and all these uh, institutions will co continuously caution various countries as to being careful about how their debt uh, growth and profiling is going. But the NDC could always want to create the impression that there's a magazine visiting Ghana. And that's the challenge. That situation in Ghana. The IMF says, no, based on what they know of Ghana and where we stand, we are positioned very well and we are strong and we are doing pretty well. They didn't say look that. at all the ratings Offline. that have been, look at, look at all the ratings that are coming out well. from Fitch and from other bodies, it tells you that this country grading system and the way we are performing, we are performing extremely well. Been downgraded. I mean, for the NDC, they can be forgiven because these are pure mischief. You are talking about what the monies were used for. Earlier on, I took the opportunity of letting them know that even when you are talking about the NDC alone, this government had to borrow to pay for $12 billion uh, 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 Ghana cities of their recklessness Every in the energy sector. Every uh, You that's didn't say that. That's, that's but how can you didn't mention that? How can you didn't mention that? You didn't mention that. You, don't, 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 you, 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 you cause a a major havoc at the energy sector, so you have to borrow to come and pay it. This government inherited in excess of 11 billion in terms of arrears at contracts and other do, uh, things that they signed. This government had to pay for that. And there are other challenges that they left for us. But what they have not even forgot, they've forgotten is that those loans that they took, that were dollar dominated. It grows when the dollar exchange rate changes. They understand that. So they need to understand all these basic facts. But for us as a government, what we know is that the good people of this country, during the COVID situation, whatever it is that needed to be done for them, the government is doing, including stimulus packages that have been given to the people. The good people of the northern region can appreciate President Akufuado because when he said you will bring one village, one dam, he's, he's done that. And mm -hmm. the people are enjoying that. Mm -hmm. The big people of Palugu will know and appreciate that, that for the first time in our history, the highest ever investment in the northern part of the country is the Palugu Dam and the Tamale Interchange. The Palugu is Oh, in excess of $600 million. No government has thought about that. That is going to generate power and also for irrigational purposes and also to provide water for the community. The people appreciate that. Okay. The good people of so this country we, we, appreciate we the fact that now the every constituency can boast of one of ambulance. Discussion. The people of this country can now be appreciative and thank the President, Excellency, and Kufuado for the investment in health sector. That is why now we are talking about the uh, Agenda 111. We're talking about President going to cut so for uh, somewhere and another place. That's why the chief went. No, 
the NDC were at their, 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 their usual mischief and it backfired because no backfire. the president was there to cut short for the agenda 111. It's a new initiative, right? The 101 uh, 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 hospitals that have been uh, 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 built across the country, including six regional hospitals. It is a new initiative, so nobody could have gone anywhere to cut any sort. So that mischief can be thrown into right, the dustbin. We'll move, we'll move to our last point. issue. So now the people have electricity. So they are, they, are, they, are, they, are, they, are, they are thankful to the president. The NDC never stopped doing so. This doing so crisis was a money problem and the problem of incompetence. <laughs> and the incompetent <laughs> one could not solve it. <laughs> and another don't quite before then, Dr. Bomia. So we'll move to our third story, a developing story. Uh, yes, it says police invite side scenario over claims he distributed weapons to cause chaos. Story from citynewsroom.com reads, the national vice chairman of the NDC, al Haji side scenario, has denied culpability in an alleged plot to arm people with weapons to cause chaos during the December 2020 polls. The NDC stalwart is to report to the police this morning after the NDC constituency chairman of the Iowa North uh, constituency reportedly confessed to police that al Haji scenario had supplied guns to some youth to cause chaos during the upcoming polls. According to Mr. Sinai, the allegations against him are false, and he's certain that he will be exonerated. In a City News interview, Alaji Sinai said the action of the constituency chairman, who has been his employee for eight years, may be as a result of anger after he fired him about a month ago. That's an internal NDC issue. He's also yes. suspecting that, the, um, according to a letter he, he released, also suspecting that the gentleman may be a political operative working against him. But the issue of arms, this, this week, the issue of political violence, or the do do from Sunday, has been very, 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 very topical. Yeah, we saw it's not it's just even uh, from the registration period when our Kumsi shot the gun and said she has shot the but gun. But on this point, all on these this matters invitation. are all put together. You know, just about. To we are moving to uh, from here. I'm going to the uh, regional police headquarters, um, accompanying him to see the police. The police has invited him. Um, so, because this is a matter that will be under investigation, and um, clearly I will be in the thick of affairs. For me, I'm just Perfect. going there. I do not want to Prejudice. start discussing it before I even get there. But it is true, it's confirmed, he's been invited. I've just seen his call. Um, any moment from now, I will drive towards there. Some other lawyers will meet me there, and then we'll deal with the matter. Probably. You may want to call me after the interrogation, and I can tell you his position when he gets there. So that is what I can say for okay. you. Yeah, I think uh, I'll, 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 uh, uh, kudos to my brother for uh, taking such a mature uh, point on this particular matter. For me, I always want to say that Ghana is the only country we have. Myself and uh, Maneba, we are friends and brothers. We can sit on TV and platforms and make our point forcefully. Sometimes we can even get angry, but then the, what matters is that we are still one and the same. Because I'm sure when you go to his family, you see MPP members who are more than NDC members in his family. My, my mm -hmm. family has some NDC members, but there are just some few, few people, <laughs> about three or four. But then the, what happens is that we are the okay. same. I mean, what we need to... In my family, there are more MPP than NDC. Of course, of course, of course. <laughs> but you see, there's one thing that we need to understand. The Ghana I agenda joker. ought to be bigger mm -hmm. than our, our political affiliations, our religious affiliations, tribal affiliations. We ought to position Ghana and make Ghana bigger than the sum of our individual ambitions. We ought not to sort of get ourselves involved in all this in fighting and all that. There are things that I saw in this mm -hmm. electionary campaign that made me excited. Where you can see MPP, NDC car moving and NPP women will go with their peripheral dance around. I mean, we have beautiful people. We disagree. On matters, I do believe that NDC people are quite com incompetent. They don't know how to manage their country. Yeah, but that's the, that's the, that's the only issue that that challenge I have that note. But they are my friends. They are my people. I hope they are getting me. Mm. I should not have issue where I'll even contemplate having guns. I mean, these are NDC, two NDC people. I mean, one accusing the other. I do believe that the police, I trust them, they will do a good work on this matter. But let's understand, this is to the youth in particular. Please. Ghana, when you look up north, we are seeing Burkina Faso, right? Yeah. You are seeing uh, 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 La Côte d'Ivoire on the side, Togo here, and the sea is up there. These three countries that borders right. us cannot hold us. Please, our only safe place is our land. Let's protect our land. Let's go and vote our country and vote for okay. somebody to, uh, who can lead the country, but not to go and kill each other. And All I think right. that so is that's, that's how we wrap up uh, the news review segment for Thursday. I had in studio government spokesperson on infrastructure. Uh, Richard Asante Abwa and Director of NDC Legal Services, uh, Abraham Amaliba, who's right from here moving to the police headquarters. 
with regards to the issue involving allergic snacks. We just finished discussing. Up next is the DIY segment how to grow a self sufficient garden uh, with the rest of the team. My name is Duke Minto. Like keep it. watching CTV. Gonna... Stay with us. Two weeks ago, I had nowhere to turn to. I needed funds urgently. That's when I ran into Wafa Kofi. Ah, it's you Wafa Kofi. Hello. It's good I saw you here. Really? You know with businesses we starting after the lockdown, getting funds has been really difficult. To pay for some of the goods in high demand, and my supply is no longer selling on credit. Sister Ma, my financial partner is Advanced Savings and Loans. Advanced stayed by my side all through the COVID crisis. They offered me grace period. They also gave and now they are here to help me clear my containers by offering me a loan. Are you sure they are giving out loans even during the COVID pandemic? Yes, Advanced Ghana has you covered. So that's how I got a loan to stock up my shop. Call us on 0800-355-355 or visit our nearest branch for our various loan and deposit products. Advance, your preferred financial partner. There is no promise we cannot keep. There is no commitment we cannot honor. There is no delivery we cannot guarantee. There is only one Bethel Logistics Company Limited, a licensed international freight forwarding and clearing agent, a trusted global brand with an extensive network for the movement of air freight and ocean freight worldwide. We are the trusted name for road freight into Western and Northern Africa. We are fully accredited by Ghana Customs and Excise. We cater for all your freight forwarding, customs clearing and forwarding, cross trades, inland transportation, internal cargo tracking systems, customer freight costing and consultancy, cold chain logistics management, logistics and warehousing, quality inspection and much more. In Accra, Tema and Takradi, we are always available to ensure easy movement of cargo countrywide. Call us on 0204-528-900 or 0244-707-859. Email info at BethelLogistics.com. Locate us in Accra at North Ridge, adjacent Accra Girls High School, or in Tema at Community 4, or in Takradi on the second floor of the GCB building. Website, BethelLogistics.com. Bethelog, experts in shipping logistics. Hello, sisters. My name is Adjoa, and I need your advice. Mm -hmm. I've been married for 15 years with three children. In the ninth year of our marriage, I realized he was cheating on me, and I confronted him. He admitted he was cheating and said he won't stop. He recently work, uh, he's recently working on a project and has asked me to help him financially because he knows I have the means. With what he's been doing to me all these years, do you think I should help him? Because regardless, he's still my husband. Hmm. I need your advice. Why are you taking what you don't deserve? It's mm. my question for her. Why is it okay for her to live in a situation that she has no control over? And why has she created a lifestyle where she's become a participant, a.k.a. a victim? If you have issues about investing, you to just say, no, I can't. <laughs> Sister Sister is sponsored by Vodafone. The future is exciting, ready and secure. You decide.
Uh, plant Mama is out there somewhere gardening with the CEO of Stratcom Africa, um, Mrs. Esther Koba. And so we're going to join them and learn how to grow a self-sufficient garden. Welcome back. It's Breakfast Daily on City TV for the DIY segment today. We have the queen of gardens and flowers in Ghana. She's going to show us how to plant. You know, right now, coronavirus, people are stressed out. And planting is actually very therapeutic. She'll walk us through some plants that we need to know the process so that if you are an amateur like myself, 
you'll be able to be a plant mama or a plant dada in no time. I'm talking about Esther Kova, who's the convener of the Ghana Gardens and Flowers Show. Good morning. Good morning. How are you? I'm fine. Sitting in my garden is always... <laughs> Thank <sighs> you for welcoming us into the place that is closest to heaven. Yes, <laughs> God created a garden and put us in it, and uh, we have to preserve this garden. Yeah. yeah, how important is it for everyone to at least try to own a little garden? It's important because it helps us to preserve the environment so that we have some place that is good and healthy to continue to live in. Mm -hmm. As the saying goes, when the last tree dies, the last man dies. Yeah. You don't want to die. So keep your garden, be in a garden. Because gardens are therapeutic, as you said. Gardens, plants take in uh, carbon dioxide and they give us oxygen. Working in a garden also means that you're working your body, you know, your limbs, your muscles and all that. Your mind also rejuvenates when you sit in a garden. I, at least for me, that happens. I mean, recently there's been talk about how garden helps to uh, ha helps with mental health. Yeah. So it's very good to be in a garden. And then also we eat from the garden. You can have my um, papaw tree, I have my pear, I have my plantain, my oranges mango, behind oranges you. behind me. <laughs> and then I have my vegetable, little vegetable patch out there. And I have my herbs and spices as well. So you can eat from the garden. You can get employment from the garden. You can st save foreign exchange by uh, doing gardening and, uh, uh, and uh, planting flowers. And of course, everybody likes what is beautiful. So it, their gardens are important. Yeah. And when you read Genesis, for instance, the book of Genesis for those who are Christians, you see that the world was a chaos and God partitioned, put the water on the side, and he planted a garden. Hmm. He didn't create human beings first. He created the world into a garden. And then he created a garden in the garden and put human beings there. Hmm. So it means that each of us is required to have a little garden within the world of a garden in which we live. Hmm. But what are we doing? We're creating concrete jungles, concrete gardens yeah. where we live. And uh, we're getting all kinds of conditions. We don't understand them, partly because, you know, the gardens, the plants, even inside, they take certain toxins out of yeah. the environment. So it's healthy, it's wealth, it's green, it's beautiful to have a, to be in a garden. And I love it here. The air even smells different here. I don't smell any of the pollution in a car. Yeah. So for the beginners, where would we even start from when we begin to talk about gardening? You start from what you have around you. Okay. We in Ghana are very lucky. You will see that plants like Winkle, hibiscus, African daisy and all that, they grow all around us and very often we take them for granted. Yeah. So if you see any of the, and they multiply, mm. a lot of them multiply. Yeah. So if you see them around you, you take care of them. Mm. And if you want them in, uh, if you want a lot of them, then you clear your ground of weeds yeah. and organize the plants that you want to see there. And so you prepare your soil, okay. which is which God has given us in abundance. In some places in Ghana, you don't even have to go and fetch black soil. It's there already. The Recently, I cut some uh, plants in my house and I realized that I had a lot of compost hmm. because there was dead leaves that had mixed up with soil. Yeah. That is compost right there. Wow. God created the world in a manner that it feeds itself. Yeah. So if you have compost, you mix that with your soil. Okay. Or you can also use a, a chicken manure, okay. chicken droppings, or cow, um, cow dung and okay. all that. 
and you leave the soil to you leave all that to uh, mix well mm -hmm. otherwise the heat from the manure could kill your plants ah. so you leave them to uh, settle okay. and then you can plant your seeds or your seedlings okay you can also use your kitchen waste hmm. so can we There's, do a demonstration today okay because i see some some plants, plants here, here that so let's we say this is some. your um, I'm going to use my... Okay, and I'm here to help, so okay. let me know what you need me to do. So let's say this is your ground. Okay. So we'll take the tools out of we there. We take the tools out. Okay. Should I bring one small pot or not, not yes. yet? Not yet. Okay. Yes. So let's say this is your ground. Mm -hmm. You have to water it. Okay. So let me use this. this is let, me, let me help yes. you. Thank you. So let me know it's usually to better to have a, a thing at the edge okay. so that the water does not hit the ah, soil hard. So it should be sprinkled. Let it should be sprinkled. Let's use this, this. one. How, how fun is it for couples to even do this at home together? Because oh. I feel like we're bonding right now. Yes, we're bonding. And couples need to do this all the time. The good thing is that as you're uh, having babies, you're having babies in the garden as well, <laughs> because the things that you plant mm -hmm. also yield fruit. Yeah. So you will be harvesting your mangoes, you have, you'll be harvesting your beautiful flowers and putting them in your living room, <laughs> on your table, or you will be harvesting your herbs and spices. I have some here, I put them in my tea wow. all the time. So. You also want to make sure that air goes into your um, soil. Okay. So don't just put water on it and leave it to dry. Okay. It cakes ah. at the top. And uh, uh, the water you put on it then does not go in very well. Okay. That's the why water. it's good to have a, a little sprinkler thing at the edge of your um watering can okay. or if you're using a regular water hose mm -hmm. usually you see that people put their little finger at the tip yeah. it's so that the water will not hit the soil hard ah. and make it cake because you know we have a lot of sunshine huh. and if you don't take care the water uh, the soil cakes and so, when you water it just stays at the surface so two of my baby plants have caked at home and because I just dump the water on them and then I'm done. You I shouldn't do that, I should please sprinkle. Please don't do that, you should sprinkle. Okay. And because you see, when it rains, it sprinkles. Yeah, it doesn't just... It doesn't just hit. So it's, it's able to, the, the, the soil drinks hmm. the water. So you don't want to drown the soil. No, and then it goes into the ground and then the roots suck the water. Hmm. from the from the soil okay. so that's what i have been learning wow I, it's because i love gardening that i've been <laughs> i allow myself to be taught and i have my dear wahab who <laughs> i've been working with for the and past and wahab will be coming over yes, soon <laughs> yes 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 but let I me know if you need me to do this as well because i no. want to so I wanna get in there yes you should do it it's okay. good for the arm so you're working out your so arms so i'm working out my arm okay. as i do this I'm, I'm, I'm toning my, 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 my arm muscle, yeah. you see? And you look fabulous, by I the way. Do? You do. Thank you. you. I, you know, I stop I'm... being modest. <laughs> 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 so now I have my uh, soil ready. Okay. And what do I want to plant? Hmm. Uh, today, I will plant hibiscus, but this, is, this is actually the flower. I need wow. a, for hibiscus, you usually would have a little cutoff okay. that you plant mm -hmm. and that takes its time. Okay. But you wouldn't plant it directly here. You will nurse it okay. in a little polythene bag or in a little area where, uh, just as a baby, just okay. as a, a woman, that's why I say women are like uh, gardeners. <laughs> we, we take seeds, we take seedlings, and we nurture them. Yeah. So you, when you have a baby, you don't put it out there. You make sure that you nurture it in a, a, a little, a, a safe and secure place. Yeah. And when it's growing, then you bring it out.
out. Yeah. So that is what we'll do. How so, beautiful is it watching your tiny little plants blossom and into big One of the things that plants. I love <laughs> is when I put seed in the ground and after a few days, the ground splits and the seed germinates. Yeah. Oh, I love that. I love that, I love that. So you see that the thing is really coming out, yeah. but it teaches you patience also, yeah. because you have to wait and watch it happen. Yeah. But when it happens, it is really fulfilling. So if you're an impatient person watching us, would you recommend I, I starting this, it will you help you? An impatient person, <laughs> gardening is good for you. Okay. Because it helps you to wait. For instance, there are some flowers, like the one over there, uh -huh. that flower once a year. Oh. Okay. And when they flower, they are beautiful. Wow. So you have to patiently wait for them to fly. And when, they fla when it flowers, it flowers only at night, huh. around 11 p.m. Wow. And if you don't see it at that time by morning it is dead so you have to pay close attention you to have it. to pay close attention to it and wow. enjoy it yeah. it teaches you to treasure the things that you love be patient with them and enjoy them oh you're taking us to church but um, <laughs> and viewers if you have any questions for us let us know the hashtag is breakfast daily and the whatsapp line is 550 how long have you been gardening? Oh, since I was a child. My <laughs> mother taught us to uh, plant what we ate. Ah. Uh, so we planted tomatoes. It, was, it wasn't even like gardening. Mm -hmm. It was <laughs> you need to eating it, yeah. and taking care of yourself. So we planted garden eggs, tomatoes, um, peppers, Name spinach. It. We have them, spinach, contumere, all of them. <laughs> and we planted them and we harvested them and ate. And then, of course, when I went to Mofratro, which mm -hmm. is in Kumasi, mm -hmm. it's, Mofratro is a children's garden. Ah. There, we, every house had a garden. Wow. And we, the children, were expected to take care of the garden. So we would go and fetch black soil, fetch manure, and fetch the flowers that we wanted to plant and we competed among ourselves wow. and that really uh, enriched my life my love for gardening it's beautiful to have that around you so i've been doing gardening since i was a child wow yes <laughs> i mean and what kind of skills have you been able to learn we've talked about patience We've talked about tolerance, we talk about trust that you're able to even apply to your I life think as a leader. Creativity, creativity. You you need to you can have plants all around you, but the way you position the plants and arrange them hmm. help to bring out their beauty. So if you look at the wall, yeah. I've done a, a, a wall, people use artificial carpet for this, but I've done a, a, a creepers. Yeah. And in between them, to bring color, I have put my philanopsies. Hmm. And I enjoy them. So this is creativity. Yeah. And the work that I do, for instance, requires a lot of creativity. creativity yeah. But it also requires an color that I want against the background of the green. Yeah. So I have to analyze the temperament of the plant mm. to be able to create with it. Wow. Just as in my work as a communications person, I have to analyze the characteristics and the context of my stakeholders mm -hmm. to be able to give them the messaging they need. In yeah. Stratcom Africa, we say we blend the science and the art of bring the science and art into my gardening situation Beautiful. as well and when i when i finish planting when i arrange my pots and all that i step back and i look to see whether they are doing well that is monitoring right there yeah. and over time depending on what i know of the behavior of the plant i evaluate to see whether 
it is doing well or not. Wow. And you can even apply that to members of your yes, team. Yes. Okay, yes, let's get our hands yes. dirty. <laughs> so, so I want to touch the soil. Please here. Go ahead. <laughs> so let me know. And it just feels so good it to just good. touch it soil. It is good. It is good. Just wash your hands very well when you're done. Yeah. So you see that I don't have any of those fancy nails. Because <laughs> <laughs> you're always gardening. I'm always gardening. <laughs> I'm always gardening. But you can still have that. Wear your gloves. Yeah. Or use your gardening fork and then you're good to and go and you're good to go and, and how we, important is it to do this with the kids because a lot of you know urban people now want to sit in front of the tv play video games we tell deprive, their kids to go on social media we and deprive, obesity is killing we, us yes too. we deprive our kids of so many things i mean i did this with my mother and <laughs> it has helped me up to this point so my grandchildren come and they have their walking can they have their this is so uh, cute <laughs> little, and they, these are very inexpensive things so they're creating memories with you that they'll cherish memories. for a lifetime and then the other thing i find i'm able to do with them is i'm able to get them to appreciate nature hmm. and the, the the awesomeness of god yeah. by sent, taking them around the garden and showing them things and letting them understand that there is so, a, somebody who created all these things mm -hmm. and that person is the god that we worship yeah. so I'm, oh, I'm, Wahab, I just want to use my fingers. <laughs> <laughs> I'm enjoying it. <laughs> I'm, I'm using this Thank you. to even, you know, because church is not just the chapel that we go to. Huh. Church is everything around us. Wow. The word of God is right here in hmm. the plants that we see around us. So I'm teaching them that it's important to preserve and protect surroundings yeah. that you find, the, the gardens that you find, there, the environment. So when they grow up, and somebody's cutting down a tree, they can tell that person, no, this does so and so for us. Don't cut the tree. Hmm. Yeah. So and, what and, and what does that can... do for bonding? Because I know you talk about your mom extensively and you know some of our parents will just make it look like such a boring chore. But when you talk about your relationship with your mom, it looked like she really included you, oh, she taught did. you to be she independent, confident. In so everything that she did. So by the time she died when I was 11 years, there were so many things I could do. Yeah. I'm telling you that I learned to do gardening from her. Yeah. And even my entrepreneurial skills, I learned from her. And she taught me that, Mama, if you're able to plant these things, it means that you don't go to the market and spend money. Yeah. So when I was at Presec doing national service with my little national service money, what happened was that I spent very little on food huh. because I planted most of my food. Wow. Home and maybe like, for example, the dad that's always at work, now they are home, but they don't know how to start bonding with the kids. Would they this be a great way to it, break the it's ice? It's a great way to break the ice and I just want uh, we'll have to bring us some of these ones okay. so that we can plant them because I have a lot of them. Ah, okay, Habib, so we'll we get could, those. Yes, okay. if okay. you could uh, bring them. So you can, Saturday morning, you can do this with the kids instead of just thrusting them in front of the, the TV. TV. When my grandkids come, they don't like to stay inside. They <laughs> like to run around because I'm an outdoor person. Yeah. Uh, probably because I grew up in a in a community where we had to be outdoors yeah. there weren't so many rooms <laughs> where everybody had every room had a tv so you can just sit and watch tv all day long it, we had to be outside yeah. so on saturday morning you can do this with your kids mm -hmm. in the evening if you're able to get home early you can do this with your children okay and uh, with your wife yeah and talk over things I mean, I, I have a, a, a plaque that says that you can... Oh, yes. wow, we have a lot. Thanks, yes. Wahab. These ones what are these called easily. Wahab, what are these called? Dumpkin. It's dumpkin. a dumpkin. Okay. Yes. And are the they indoors dumpkin, or outdoors? These are outdoors. Okay. They need the sun, a, a combination of sun and, and shade, shade okay. for their color to come out. Ah. Yes. 
and, and they grow easily these multiply easily yes ah. there are variations there in the damp cane family okay yeah so once we do this what's the next because what we'll happened i already went around cutting it and then he told me that you have to cut where the joint is because yes. some of us don't know so we just cut randomly. Yes. so you cut where the joint is because is that? that is where the roots will come from ah. the roots come from where the joint is because the, at that joint it needs water it needs food okay so it's almost like placing your stomach near where food is or your mouth your mouth <laughs> your where mouth. food is yes <laughs> it'll gravitate so the joint, automatically the joint is like your mouth ah. so it then goes looking for water and for food ah okay yes. and is it wrong to put the sand in the bowl first and then put the water in do we have to mix the, the the soil before you we can put it mix in the bowl it. you can also uh put the uh, soil in the pot, pot and then put the water in it okay. and then but this is better because it helps you actually yes, distribute yes, the water you, evenly you're able to and then you also uh, the soil is not packed ah. the soil becomes you yeah. know light yeah. so that um the roots can can Really? Navigate. Yes. yes. <laughs> so what's the next step? Is that it? We're done? It's all way we, we have the Adam Kane uh, wow. plants. You can take one away when you're going. Oh, thank so you. That... My, 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 my producer, Angela, was also wants to start her own baby Oh, garden, she can so also have one. These ones multiply so easily. <laughs> and once you start, you see that you're multiplying and multiplying. So a number of our exhibitors say that they started in their home like this mm -hmm. and then the things multiply and they repot they replant they repot very soon there was no space in their home <laughs> so then they beca they begin to have a, a, a floriculture garden. business yeah wow your garden here where did you start from because this looks like this is magic i started i guess with the grass okay because I, even though I like d uh, the soil, I don't like dirt. Oh, wow. And I like things to be clean, clean. and tidy. So I planted grass so that uh, the whole uh, place will be clean. Covered, okay. Yes. In fact, there was a tussle between me and my family because I was taking so much of the driveway. <laughs> so. Uh, so, unlike situations where people, if I, it was, it wouldn't get so mushy during the uh, rainy season, yeah. that place would oh also God. be, you know, the driveway would also be a garden. I'm sure our, but, our viewers don't even believe we're in Accra yes. right now. So we did the, I did the garden. <laughs> then I just imagined in my mind's eye what i would like to see and i decided i would like to walk through a canopy or a, 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 a gallery of plants beautiful plants so i got these ones and then i also thought i need a big tree under which i can sit yeah. because then it provides shade in the house i'm used to that from my hometown commander where we would sit under trees and people would sit and play dummy and all those things. It's only in urban areas that people don't like uh, green areas and green spaces and parks. So I got this, huh, how many years ago? Uh, it's huge. It's, I planted it, it was like this. This was one CD 50 pesos oh at that time. Oh my god! So I think now it would be a penny and one peso 50. <laughs> so I planted it myself. Wow. And then planted around it. And I also like the sound of water because I come from a coastal area yeah. and I had to leave that and come to Accra. So I created water features around me. Wow. And over the years I've been uh, collecting that. So when I sit out in the garden and I see the plants and I hear the sound of water. You're it's, in heaven. It's it's just beautiful. Magical. Now, there are people who overwater their plants. Yes. It's walk us through, after you are done planting, what you need to do so that you don't kill you the plants. You have to. So that's where the 
analytical work comes in. Okay. That's why I have my consultant, Wahab. Yes, Wahab, should he join us? <laughs> <laughs> so I find out what when I'm purchasing a plant or when I'm bringing a plant into the house, mm -hmm. I first find out what kind of plant it is, okay. whether it needs to be in the shade or it should be in the, it can be, it does well in the sun, how much water it needs, whether it's an indoor plant or, or an outdoor oh, plant. Okay. So you have to find all that out before you bring them in. Sometimes mm. you're so excited you bring the plant in, you don't check. Yeah. What, however, when you come, you may see that the plant is not doing well. Mm -hmm. I have done that a few times. Then I pick it from here and I put <laughs> it here and see that How oh, it it's react. doing better here. Then I know that uh, it's, it's not supposed to be in the sun or it's not supposed to be in the shade. Where can we find you? For newbies who are trying to learn how to garden, uh, what's the social media so we follow you? It's the website is gardenandflowergh.com. Now, this upcoming Thursday, there's a big event about gardening and flowering. Can you tell us about it? Because there are a lot of people who want to learn how to garden. It's a Ghana Garden and Flower Show. Yay! And it's coming on on Thursday, 4th November 2020 till okay. 8th November 2020. Okay. Now, the Ghana Garden and Flower Show started from my garden. <laughs> Somebody saw my garden and says, I mean, you have such a beautiful garden. I say, you know what I desire? That I'll see gardens like this all over Ghana and that our walls would even come down mm -hmm. and everybody can enjoy our gardens. And so it began. Oh, wow. And Stratcom Africa, you know, picked it up and it we made it a, a CSR initiative okay. and it's been running since 2013 until now. Wow, and seven years. Yes, and this time it's virtual. Nice. So you're going to see the exhibitors on a virtual platform. Okay. You're going to see the conference on a virtual platform. Wow. You're also going to see master classes in uh, planting. Okay. And what are we doing? We're using communication as a tool to communicate environmental conservation, yeah. job creation, wealth creation, and aesthetic beauty. Thank you so much, You're welcome. Madam Esther Kova, for welcoming us into your home Thanks. and teaching us how to garden. I think it's really important. I've learned so much from this experience. Teamwork, critical thinking, trusting the process, being patient, and also being a leader. So thank you, thank you, thank you. And if you're at home and you want to learn to be a gardener, it's simple. Just get the soil, get your hands dirty. You may need a Wahab in your life. And I'm sure <laughs> Madame Estakoba will be able to get us people like that. But it's important to conserve the environment. The future generation will need it. So don't go anywhere, guys. Breakfast Daily will be right back. times we need a competent leader we can trust to keep us all safe Nana gave me free water when I needed it most to keep me clean and safe from COVID-19 Nana gave me lower cost of internet during COVID-19 to operate my small business from home Nana told us to trust him to keep our children safe from COVID-19 when we send them back to school. Nana was right. Nana gave me free electricity in my hour of need during COVID-19. Nana told us to trust him to keep Ghana safe from COVID-19.
Yeah, welcome back. This is still The Breakfast Daily on City TV. We're now going to have a very interesting conversation with two amazing individuals from the Denotables Club. Uh, we have in studio Dr. Mrs. Gloria Clarissa Jaha and Mrs. Barbara Ayagre yeah. here with us. Now, we're going to be discussing promoting Christian family life values. And uh, we want to start with these amazing women because they have this great club going on. So if I can start with you, Doc, tell us all about the Denotables Club. All right. Thank you very much. And I'm particularly appreciative of being here. Thank sure. you for the audience as well. Denotable Club is a club for Christians, single, male and female, men mm. and women, mm. and just come together in, in a form of networking for the purpose of, in fact, the singles, men and women must have the desire to marry. Mm. It's very, very important. If you are single and you don't have the desire to marry, you can't be with the denotable. So mm. you must have the desire to marry. You must be a Christian. You must be a single, mm. single, single. And then when we gather, we put, we come together in a club we, for purposes of acquisition of knowledge and skills. Right. To be able to help to be able to help us and then also grooming ourselves personally mm. personality mm. Uh, grooming to be able to help us to position ourselves well mm. for a successful marriage right. we believe that there's a lot of knowledge out there that must be uh, people must get before they enter into mm. that god's mm. institution called marriage and right. this is where the notables come in to help give that knowledge out there so that people can get the mm. right people to know who they actually are even first, before you even decide and choose a partner, you must first know who you are exactly. to be able to appreciate who really mm. can best fit and partner you to be able sure. to achieve God's purpose for your life. Because mm. I believe that every individual has a purpose to achieve. Mm. And for you to be able to achieve your purpose here on earth, to stand before God, not being afraid, you need to um, partner with the right person. Right. I like that. I like that. Yeah. But from, from where did this whole idea come from to okay. form a club that brings together single oh, men and women with a desire to marry okay so basically let me give you this scenario so we have people who actually go into marriage very early mm. with less information on even how to how to manage their homes mm. and they get in there you know so much in love and they get overwhelmed with I mean a lot of responsibilities that comes with marriage mm. they either and then at a point they are like ah, is it the right choice I made? Should I go out? Should I still stay in? And indeed, you also have others, on the other hand, that are very that are trying to be very cautious because they wouldn't want to enter in into it and get out early or possibly get that stress, you know, overwhelming them. So we thought that no, there is some body of information required, you mm. know, for one to have this success, this I mean, successful journey. And that body of information must be offered to single men and women before they even enter into the institution. Yeah. Marriage is God's institution. Yeah. And everything that is of God is good. So everyone that enters into marriage must enjoy it. You could only enjoy your marriage if you have the required information that God has deemed it necessary mm. for you to enjoy that marriage. So together, I mean, with um, Gloria, we, we thought that there is a gap. Indeed, there is a gap. How can that gap be filled in? We need to put people together, mm. single men and women. And our focus is matured because when, when, you are, when you are 30 and above, you get anxious, you know. Exactly. And if you don't take care, you would end up into something that you really did not prepare yourself for. Exactly. So the notable come in to prepare this matured Christian men mm. and women to equip them with that body of information, with that word of wisdom required, just so that when you enter into your marriage, you just enjoy it. And it, it will just be blissful for you. And just to add a yeah. bit to, sure, sure, well, just sure. to add a bit to Barbara said, we believe that um, the family unit begins with marriage. Absolutely. Yeah. So getting yeah. it right as God's institution is very paramount. Mm. The family unit is the bedrock of society. Mm. Mm. So mm. if the family unit, that nuclear family unit, is gotten wrong mm. and things go bad, bad it affects yeah. society as a whole. Absolutely. And one That's of true. pillars of national development, 
hinges on societal development. So Absolutely. if good societal, I mean, this small unit of a, fa a family unit is well developed. We believe that it goes a long way to affect even national agenda. Mm. Absolutely. So the notables come in to fill that gap, to help people get the right knowledge that they need, that body of information mm. that they need to be able to, I mean, put the right foot forward, choose mm. the right person, partner with them, be beyond all that God's will and purposes for our lives need to be achieved. Yeah. Right. Because the Bible says that with wisdom, through wisdom, a house is built. Mm. And by understanding, mm. Bible says that it is established. Yes. And then beyond that, it goes that with knowledge, mm. the, the, the precious items mm. and the pleasant mm. things that we mm. need for the house mm. is fitted. Right. So you need wisdom, you need knowledge, you need understanding to be able to build yeah. that house called marriage. Mm. Making sure that you don't shipwreck your partner, you don't shipwreck your children, such that you all fulfill your purpose. Because mm. your children have purpose, you yourself have your own purpose, your, your wife or your husband has their own purpose. Yes. But all this yeah. must be in synchrony, such that the general purpose of God for that particular nuclear family mm. is yeah. actually, uh, I mean, done. Yeah. And then it goes on drop off on society, yeah. becomes a, a wilder and a, a, a more bigger picture yeah. for national development. Awesome, yeah. awesome, awesome. Now, I first heard of you from the City Breakfast Show. You were in an interview with Bernard. Yeah. Yes. Yes. <laughs> so then I heard the name The Notable, and then I, I began to think, is it French, is it Italian, is it Spanish? <laughs> the Notable. <laughs> what is, tell us, how did you coin the name? How did you come about the name? So, so Notable, it's, 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 a synonym it's, for. it's a synonym for, I mean, singles. Mm. We don't want to use the word single. Okay. So we just, I mean, and pick another synonym for mm. single, exactly. which is notable. And then instead of saying D, that is T H E, mm -hmm. we thought of just changing it to D E, and therefore make it a little funky. notable. Absolutely, <laughs> <laughs> great, great. So th the launch of the club was this past Sunday. Oh yes. Walk us through the highlights. How did it go? Oh, it was very. It was quite amazing. Mm. It was successful. We had opportunity to go mm. into our aims or yeah, so objectives. Believe we, have, we have some pictures from the launch on yeah. our screens now. We had opportunity to go into, mm. I mean, our aims and objectives with our our, our participants. We also um, went through the whole concept, what mm. the notable is about. We took them through our program lineup. We also took them through. Um, the, the 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 details. I mean, how how we actually got involved. You know, mm. the two of us, the, all of us got involved in this particular concept all together. And indeed, it was successful. We had a good time of mm. worship and prayers with our members. And yes, in fact, we've even been having the feedback. We've been having feedback, and they are awesome, looking awesome. forward. Awesome. You know. Actually, actually, uh, the pe before people got onto the club, yeah. they thought it was a matchmaking agenda. Okay. Mm. But that is far from that. Right. There is no way we can impose somebody on, on another, another person. person. Yes. And I, I don't think it's ethical for us to impose. Mm. Sure. But we believe that if you have the requisite knowledge, the right body of information, information. it will help you to make the right choice yourself. Yeah. And also, that is not just enough. But we, the notables also typically comes in to also build the word of God in mm. people if marriage is really God's idea then you can't do it your way right. you need God's instructions mm. what God says concerned and that, that's where we come in so mm. by the time you are done with the notables and you are getting married and coming out of the notables to be something else that I think by God's grace will create <laughs> later you would have I mean known God personally yeah, for yourself absolutely. because I believe you yeah. believe you me if you don't love God you yeah. cannot love your partner mm. because within the marriage setting it gets to a point where the eros love, what mm. what draws you to the other person? Mm. It gets, I mean, there's no more eros love. Mm. Yeah. It mm. gets to the place where the love of God comes yeah. at play. Mm. And yeah. because of that, you need the love of God. You need to love God yourself and know that you appreciate God yourself. Then you can appreciate the True. God that is in your partner and appreciate True. your partner. True. So can we liken the notable to a counseling club for singles? Exactly. Certainly, certainly. Aside counseling, um, you know, our counseling is actually one on one because okay. people would want to um, have that confidence, you know, to share their concerns with you. So mm. our counseling come on one on one. -on -one. On -one. But we also have um, quite um, a pool of, you know, activities mm. that we're going to run throughout the year. We're going to have weekly prayer nights. We call mm. it the push night. 
push it, pray until something happens. Okay. So we're going to have the weekly sessions that is virtual, yeah. and we're going to have um, our monthly in-person discussion, you know, mm -hmm. time, where we'll pick topics like the family unit, why the mm -hmm. marriage, you know, and the causes of delay. We'll go through a couple of, I mean, activities, discussions, just to give them that exposure, mm -hmm. you know, into the institution that they intend to go into. And then we also have amazing quarterly, you know, programs that we mm -hmm. call it the Love Connect. So okay. we have a program lined up for the whole year. Mm -hmm. And we believe that by the time you come out of the notable Oh man, you're going to enjoy your marriage. <laughs> Interesting. Beyond, beyond, that, be, beyond what Barbara has just said, we are also going to have wonderful sessions with mm. key people. Yeah. Like the lawyer. Yeah. yeah. Right. The Notables Club is going to be exposed to a lawyer who is going to tell them everything mm. legal regarding yeah. relationship. Yeah. Because yeah. sometimes we know that some singles are not just singles maybe they've mm. been married before but they are mm. single and truly they are single but yeah. they've been married before then have they really gone through the legalities of properly i mean coming out of the marriage or have they been properly severed or something mm. like i mean the lawyer will come and just tell them even marriage itself how it's supposed to be contracted for it to be seen as yeah. um, a right or it mm. for it to be accepted the lawyer will come in to come in about to come and allay all our fears mm. beyond that we are also going to have a, a session with maybe doctors doctors yeah. are going to come talk to us psychologists will come and talk to us because this thing called marriage you need to be yeah. able to also awesome. get ready psychologically right. so as well. how does an interested person enroll okay. okay so just i mean go to our go on our facebook page mm -hmm. the name is the notables d e and the word notables mm. n o t a b l e s the notables sign up and the rest will just follow you could also call our numbers 0200 425 977 0200 mm. 425-977 and 0244-855-890. Let me repeat that. 0244-855-890. The moment you call us, we're going to send you a Google form mm. and then you sign up. Once you sign up, We'll get back to you mm. with the registration process yeah. and then you become a member of the club. Is this we for free? It is not for free. Okay. <laughs> it actually comes as a token. Mm. A token because it the club would have to be sustainable. We have to sustain this, I mean, this, this, this club going forward. And indeed, I mean, we will need people to sow into this great ministry. All right. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you so much, Dr. And Mrs. Gloria Clarissa Jahai, yes. chairperson of the executive committee of the Notables Club. And Mrs. Barbara Ayagre is the chairperson of the Notables Club. We're so grateful to have had you this morning. A lot of information from there. This is still Thank Breakfast you. Daily on CTTV. Let's check out the entertainment highlights for this morning. Welcome to Entertainment Highlights on Breakfast Daily. My name is Atu Kwamna. The National Film Authority Action Group, a pressure group largely made of film industry stakeholder association and guilds, has called the government to immediately take action to lift restrictions on our cinemas in Ghana. Presenting the petition to the presidency through the Minister of Tourism, Arts and Culture, Barbara Otin JC, yesterday, they said this is to enable the industry to kickstart its process of recovery after COVID-19 pandemic, in line with many other sectors. They also stated in the letter that they have carefully evaluated the potential spread of the virus at our cinemas and have attached a risk assessment that shows the residual rating as safe for reopening. The group proposed an online booking system which will allow the cinemas and filmmakers to easily track and trace their customers, taking into consideration measures outlined by the cinema operators and submitted to the Ghana Tourism Board for consideration. After entertaining music lovers with great music, Kelvin Boy is getting up to release his maiden album on Friday. The album title Black Star will be an anthology of songs that reflect the brand and artistry of Kelvin Boy. The 15-track body of work features astute music producers such as Kelpie, Liquid Beats, Ugly Beats, Willow Beats, Mixed Quest, Samnesi, amongst others.
British grime rapper Stormzy has won the best international flow at the 2020 BET Hip Hop Awards. The rapper of Ghanaian descent beat off competition from Nasty C, Calligraph Jones, Meryl, Karis, Miss Banks, and Joja to be crowned the winner. Sarkodie won the award last year when it was first established and was honored to do the presentation to the winner this year. Stormzy won the best grime act in 2014 and 2015 at the Mobile Awards and was named the artist to look out for in the BBC Sun Breakfast Day. I thoroughly enjoyed that yeah. conversation. I have a friend, Richard Mensah, who's still single, so mm. he says he might uh, join. Hold on. Our, our own Richard Mensah. No, you're on your own on this one. Why? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, we have I Alien here with us. Good morning. Good morning. You are so talented. Thank yeah. you. Thank you very You've much. You've got an amazing voice. Thank you. Yeah. How long have you been singing? Um, I think since I was 15, but I started professionally last year. Okay. Awesome. How's awesome. the process been like? Still pushing. Yeah, it hasn't been easy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Obviously, it wouldn't be easy, but then we're not giving up, are we? Yeah, no, I'm not. I'm awesome, not awesome. Up. So, how many, how many songs do you have out there? I have three songs okay. out there. Mm. Yeah. What, what was the uh, inspiration the latest behind one, the know. songs? Yeah. So, I had. Broken hearts last oh, year. Oh, so oh, oh, was, oh, yeah. oh, oh, give us oh, the juice. What happened? Okay, what happened? Sorry. Because they're watching right now. And we want them to know that you, you moved on. Hopefully. Don't worry. They're going to wish they never left you. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> what happened? Yeah, so I got sick. I had a partial stroke. So, oh, wow. yeah, awesome. I had this person stay with me throughout. Wow. And then just when I got better, the person was like, it was out of pity. It wasn't. Oh. Yeah, so mm. it really got to me yeah. yeah so almost all the three songs i released were based on yeah mm. wow <laughs> and we're glad you're fine now yeah I'm okay. and, and we I'm got fed. great music yeah. out of the experience i moved on i'm okay now wow. yeah where'd we you get your be. singles yeah it's out on all music platforms yeah okay. i alien music everywhere okay and your yeah. social media i alien okay. underscore underscore on instagram and uh, Twitter, yeah. Okay, well, one yeah. of the biggest female DJs in Ghana says she's your biggest fan. Mm -hmm. Her name is DJ JJ. She has your posters oh. all over her house, actually. So she said yeah. we should tell yeah, you that JJ. she she, <laughs> she thoroughly loves you. Thank you yeah. so much. Well, anybody ever told you that you sound like Asha? Yeah, I get that. Yeah, you get that a lot, huh? Yeah. Awesome. But we I love you keep music. going. Yeah, yeah, you're talented. So the you. sky is the limit. Thank you. And we're always yeah. here whenever you're ready to promote all your Thank other you so singles. much Come back for this platform. Enjoy great yeah. music. Thank Don't you. give up for Thank anything you. or for Thank anybody. You. Just keep I pushing. Keep pushing. Thank you. Yeah, Thank you so much. Great. Yeah. All righty. Well, today is Mr. Richard Amitewe's Mr. birthday. Mr. Yeah. Amitewe's birthday. Senior editor. I mean, it doesn't get any better than Mr. Amitewe. He's so humble, yeah. so hardworking, so dedicated. Mm. Like, anytime I feel like giving up, I'm like, what would Mr. Amitewe do? Yeah. Then I get that extra oomph to yeah. just go on with life. All right, Mr. Amitewe, <laughs> we wish birthday. you a very big happy birthday <laughs> to you. My name is Nana Tufo. And I am Jifa. All and right. we are going to go... Enjoy the rest of our days. So we'll see you we'll tomorrow. We'll see you tomorrow. Bye bye. Bye.